But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is still not enough. I want you to listen to me very closely. This is still not enough. Allah wishes to give us more. Allah wishes to give us more than we deserve. Because Allah knows that we live in the here and now. We live in a world that is going to be plagued with problems and troubles. And we're going to have, when you do these three things, you're going to have problems. You're going to have opposition. You're going to have enemies. The truth always has enemies in every time and every age. The people who speak the truth are always going to have enemies. They're always going to have opposition. They're always going to meet resistance. And that resistance can never be overcome in any age. Except by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for these three things, Allah says He'll give us all these things. And Allah says He'll give you something else. What you've been crying for. What you've been begging for. Oh brothers and sisters. Allah says I'll give you something even more desirous in your hearts at this time. وَأُخْرَةُ حِبُونَهَا نَصْرٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحٌ قَرِيبٌ وَبَشِرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah says, I'll give you something else which you love, which you desire for, which you're crying for, which you're begging me for. نَصْرٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ I'll give you help from Allah. وَالْفَتْحٌ قَرِيبٌ And a clear victory. So give glad tidings to the believers in the present tense. You want the help of Allah? You want the victory for the Muslims? The victory for this deen? Then you can have it. Allah says in the Quran that it is yours. It belongs to you. You can take it. The same promises that were given to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa and his sahaba. We are the warith, the inheritors of the Quran. Those promises belong to me and you. The same victory that was given to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of his hijrah from Mecca to Medina when he walked right past all of his enemies surrounding his house when he was protected in the cave by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with Abu Bakr radiallahu an and was able to make his hijrah and build the Islamic State. The same victory that was given to him on that day Belongs to you and me. The same Nasr min Allah wal Fathun Qareeb that was given to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the day of the Battle of Badr, when the angels descended from the heavens to fight and defend our Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Muslims, that even Abu Sufyan had to admit after his accepting Islam, he said, "Yes, that day I saw them. I saw the angels in white robes descending and fighting on the side of the Muslims." At that moment is when the shaitan ran and left and departed from them. This same Nasr min Allah wal Fatun Qari belongs to you and me today. The same Nasr min Allah wal Fatun Qari that was given to Muslims in our past over and over again, that was given to <coughs> Abu Bakr radiallahu an during his khalifa, that was given to Umar radiallahu an when he put most of the world under the banner of Islam, that was given to the Sahaba over and over again, that was given to Salah Adin Ayubir. Uh, rahimahullah, the same victory that has been given to those who have been struggling and have been defending and striving for the sake of Allah and His Messenger to defend Islam and the Muslims, to make the word of Allah dominant over the words of human beings that have made, tried to struggle and strive that the deen of Allah, the way of Allah is more superior than all of the false ways of life. The same victory that has come to them over and over again Go look at our history. It's filled with people like this who have tapped in to this formula and have reaped its benefits of not only avoiding themselves painful punishments, not only hopefully inshallah Allah will forgive them and give them Jannah, but they got Nasr min Allah wal Fathun Qareeb. And the reason we don't have it is because we leave out the most important part of the formula, which is the actions that Allah is asking us to do, that we make effort for Him, that we strive for Him, that we strive to make His word the most dominant way, word, 
that we strive to make his deen the most superior way of life, that we try our best to live Islam, to be Muslim. Muslim means that I am one who does Islam. I just don't lip profess it. I do it. I live it. It's my lifestyle. It is my deen. This is what we are missing and this is why we are not getting it, brothers and sisters. But do you want it? I'm asking you right now, do you want it? I want it. Ya Allah, I want your Nasr. I want the Fathun Qareeb. Because you know what is a Fathun Qareeb? A Fathun Qareeb is a clear victory. A victory for this Ummah. That not only will it be so victorious, it will be so clear that everyone will know that we are victorious because we believe in Allah. We are victorious because we believe in our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are victorious because we are Muslims. And then we will see again this surah coming back into action. إِذَا جَاءَ النَّاسُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَابًا That when the help of Allah comes and His victory and you see the people entering into Allah's religion in crowds, then you praise and glorify Allah and seek forgiveness for your sins. This is what we need. This is what we beg Allah for. أَلَّهُمَّ أَنْصُرْ وَعِزَّ إِسْلَامِ وَالْمُسْلِمِينَ يَا رَحَمَ الرَّحِمِينَ Ameen. But it's not going to come without something on our part. Because if we look at the Hadith Al-Qudsi, where Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, is what to paraphrase in the English means, that if you take one step towards Allah, Allah will take two steps towards you. If you come towards Allah, an arm length, a hand length, He'll come to you, an arm length. If you go to Allah walking, He will come to you running. Allah does a lot with a little action. But the action has, the action has to be initiated from us. Allah is waiting for us to initiate the action. He's waiting for us to take a formula for success that He gave us in Surah Al-Saf and put it into action. By getting real about this Islam, by getting real about our deen, by starting to live Islam to the best of our capabilities and to start struggling and striving and making effort for the sake of Allah with what He has given us of our possessions and ourselves. And that we follow in the footsteps of Sahaba when they said we gave bay'ah to Rasulullah to hear and obey in, in difficulty and in prosperity. In difficulty now and in prosperity, even when Allah gives us the victory, we still listen and obey. And that we don't care what the people think. They don't, we don't care what the people feel. We don't care what they say. I'm a Muslim. Yes, I'm, I'm proud to be a Muslim. Allah says that in the Quran, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَامِلَ الصَّالِحَا وَقَالَ الْإِنَانِ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ That who is better in speech than one who calls to Allah while he's a doer of good and he says to the people, Verily, إِنَّانِ Truly, indeed, without a doubt, I am a Muslim. Yes, we are here and we're not going anywhere. But we need to try to create a better environment for human beings so they can live under the banner of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah even if they don't know it's good for themselves. They don't know it's good for themselves. It's our job to show them. It's our job to make it easy for them to live in a society free from the evils that plague our society today. This is part of our deen is to be socially conscious. Socially conscious of what's going on around us and be socially proactive in society which is going to be a, uh, um, a video that will follow one of these videos where you're going to talk about the sociological aspects of Islam and the sociological impacts that Islam can have on the world.